This is Chuck Farrell from Skull 13, and you're listening to the Tim O and Harley Show. Welcome to the Tim O and Harley Show. Thank you for listening to the Tim O and Harley Show. I am Tim O. Over there is my partner in mind crime, Mr. Ben Harley. Say hello, Harley. What is happening, people? Ben Hagar, the horrible Harley. <laughs> yes, sir, Tim O. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good, buddy. I'm doing fine, good. actually. Heard you, know, you guys heard, to... heard you guys have had some yeti like weather up there. Yeah, yes, oh, we did. You know, oh, I, <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, I was dumb enough to have to venture out into it. But, uh, <laughs> yes, but I, you know, at one point I thought I might see a yeti. Yeah, but it would have been hard to see him <laughs> right. because it was <laughs> the wind was whipping. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was snowing like a son of a gun. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but we're we're persevering, Timo. This, you know, the sun is coming out. Yeah, hopefully this stuff will melt. You know. Um, one of these days, <laughs> right? By June, but actually not. Too, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, didn't yeah. you have a snow a snow hill in your parking lot, your old shop, that lasted until July? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh yep. boy, yeah, that's so still think- a neat story. I like telling people that story a lot. It's like, oh, well, I'll tell you about a snow. Let me tell you something, little kids. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Back in the early two thousands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're still playing King of the Mountain on it right around <laughs> June ish. Yeah. yeah. Then you have that. Then you have that mystery like pile of pebbles underneath it when it's done. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've seen some big snow fort. Uh, I want to say I want to say snow fort. I keep wanting to say yeah. snow fort, but you could have used well, it for funny. a snow fort. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. funny, too. When we were kids, we would play King of the Mountain over there at Parkway Plaza. <laughs> and I'm not kidding you. Those things, if you got knocked off the top of that and rolled a little bit, boy, by the time you hit the concrete. It was <laughs> and uh, But those were some big uh, piles of yeah. snow. Yeah, Did you guys a lot of parachute fun. shoot off of them? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember my brother and I, we were goofballs. We piled the snow up behind our house one time. We were jumping off the roof into it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. 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 yeah well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. You know, uh, cabin fever, Timo, does a weird thing to a man, you know. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Let me t- I know that. That I know. Yeah. yeah so. You know what I miss, Timo? We used to have cabin fever sales around here all the time. When we were younger, they'd have that, you know, like you go out there and get you a car stereo or some kind of, you know, they get right. you out there. But, yeah, I miss those cabin fever sales. I don't know what happened to them. No, well, they probably all have cabin fever too. They don't go out yeah, anymore. Yeah. I'm sure it's even not up in the snow, I guess. Anyway. Well, either that or even up in the great white north, people got a little pussified. Little bit, yeah, just a little bit. A little bit. Know. Maybe because their cars little. aren't the size of a whole area code. And it's not <laughs> right, it's not right. as easy to kind of float over the snow a little bit more than they used to kind of power <laughs> yeah. through them. Maybe that is a, right. maybe maybe I'm being tough on people. It's really the car's right. fault. Not, you know, yeah, so. true. <laughs> yeah. So uh yeah, see this week is uh Lou la la Valentine's Day. Yes, week, it Mr. is. Ben Harley. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for something, something kind of spectacular from Ben Harley <laughs> yeah. on my way. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's yeah. my bloody Valentine's. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, at the, at, at the Dermal Ridge here, we are enjoying the Dermal yes. Ridge. We're it's we're not done at all. We got months, if not years, of work to do to get everything uh, settled here. But, but I you do, guys are in there. I know, but that's, I, that's we, great. That's right, and we do have the snooty antenna. That yeah. uh, our electrician Chuck Extraordinaire put up uh, on the side of the house. So we do have the Me TV, and all week has been lovey la row row on Me TV. Oh, yeah? All the shows have been about romance and all oh, that. Yeah. yeah. So so Sunday we're getting the house put together, and every every TV in the house is set to Me TV. It's funny. I'm like, <laughs> this is heaven. Awesome. No neighbors awesome. yeah. and all Me TV wherever I look. <laughs> So different yeah. strokes had the episode where um, where Willis's girlfriend Charlene was oh, there, played, Charlene. played by a a one Judy. No, was not Judy. No, no. You, oh no, that was Janet Jackson. Was it Janet Jackson? It was right. Janet okay. Jackson. Yeah, it was. So we got to see a little little young Janet Jackson romancing with Willis. Yeah, she was in Good Times too. What, was she really in Good Times? Yeah, yeah I did not know that. The, 
the little girl was being abused or whatever. Oh, and so no. Malona, yeah, oh, Malona okay. took her in. Yeah. That's likely yeah. some good times. I haven't seen good, hopefully yeah. good times will make a return on the meat TV. Might be on antenna TV. I'd never do checking antenna TV. That's good too. That's a yeah. very good oh, channel. Yeah. I can only watch one TV channel at a time. It's for Harley. <laughs> You'd watch more if you could. I could, <laughs> I would. I really would. So, but uh, yeah. pretty funny though. There was a good, uh, of course, there's been some good Andy, Andy Griffith. Yeah. So every oh, yeah. time Andy Griffith has any kind of like romance going on and, and those plots, you know that something's going to get screwed up, right? Yeah. And yeah. who's better than oh, yeah. screwing up things than old Don Knotts? <laughs> old <laughs> yeah. Barney. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I was watching this show, this episode last night that was hilarious. It was, I mean, I want to tell you something. A gorgeous gorgeous woman walked into the walked into the sheriff's office and Andy starts, yeah. Andy like pops up and he wants to he wants to kind of like flirt with her and he wants to ask her on a date and stuff and old Barney butts in yeah. oh that sounds great Andy yeah we'll we'll come over too so <laughs> I can't think of his, his girlfriend's name off the top of my yeah. head Barney's but he uh, Emma Sue or Thelma Sue or something like that Thelma Sue I think yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so they keep they keep uh, third wheeling on Andy real bad and stuff so finally Andy has a conversation with Barney and, and says you know sometimes we've all been spending some time together and I think it's time for some alone time if you know what I mean <laughs> and Barney Barney's like oh well, why didn't you say something? So he calls Thelma Lou and tells her he has to break his day because him and Andy got things to do together. <laughs> Andy says, yeah. no, 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 no. I got some things I want to talk to. I think her name is Mary. With Mary. Yeah. I got some things I want to talk to with Mary. And yeah. Barney just goes, oh, I got it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking, whoa, oh, okay, wow, this one might actually end up with, you know, Andy getting some no. romance going on. No, yeah, what no. happened was what <laughs> Barney mistook Andy was going to propose. Oh, oh, so yeah. he ran around That's the whole right, yeah. town telling everybody that he was getting married. So they wanted to go surprise him. I mean, every night Barney was bothering these people. But what was hilarious is they went to Mary's house and they barged in to yell surprise because <laughs> they were getting engaged. <laughs> and they had taken a drive. Oh, okay. And yeah. they they, uh. they drove around the countryside to find him. And Andy had his one night alone. Was one <laughs> night alone with this chick. And the and the funniest line I think I'd ever heard, he's sitting in the car and you can hear in the distance going, There he is! There he is. And Andy hears him and just looks over and goes, Phantom Fife strikes again. <laughs> 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 I thought that was pretty good. So. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I so. think I've seen that episode too. I'm sure you not have. too long yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh boy, I tell you what, I do. I mean, I am glad that they've been playing because they were playing Gomer Pyle, and so, I'm not I'm sorry. It's just not Andy Griffith, man. Yeah, they were doing that uh, Mayberry RFD. Oh or whatever, God, too. yeah. And uh, I just, you know, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. But it's not it's funny. Fun, yeah. It's no, just not same. like that. Yeah. No. no. So, uh -uh. Anyway, good times. Been watching that stuff. Uh, oh, I had a wedding this weekend, Ben Harley. You might find kind of interesting. Uh, my cousin Stacy, okay, yeah. uh, she got married, and congratulations she got to married Stacey up. and Bruce. And Bruce. Um, Bruce Campbell? No, no, it wasn't Bruce oh, Campbell. Okay. No, no, okay. Little, not uh, not as famous, but just as handsome. That's all what right, I'm telling you right now. So, <laughs> um, they got married, and they got married at the the classic or the Gateway Classic Car. This mm. giant, like Sam's Warehouse size place of all antique and hot rod cars. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. yeah. Because her mom and dad, my aunt and uncle, they're real into. My uncle, um, like redoes, refurbs like classic cars, like from the 40s and 50s and stuff like that. Man, was that neat. And, wow. and yeah, man, I did I get pickled. Did you? I got I pickled on, on some wine I did. <laughs> yeah, I was drinking some wine and got pickled. And Yeah, it's the best yeah. place to do it at a wedding. Oh, I'm okay. telling you, yeah. Of course, I had to make Angio drive home because I was like, I don't think I got to drive. And it's one of those deals where you're drinking, you're fine, and then you start walking out, you're going, Maybe I I'm think I'm drunk. Well. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm drunk, you know? Yeah. I knew I was drunk after we had gotten home and we watched a little TV and we were going out in the garage to have ourselves a little smoke, and I did the old five-year-old butt thing down the stairs. I kind of <laughs> fell and just kind of bumped my way down the stairs and 
for the second time, Ben Harley. Not the first. Nice. It was the second time. Second I did it time. twice. Yeah. Well, it's I, a new house, Tim. Well, you got to get used to it. That's right? what Angelo <laughs> said. I said, will you stop it? I fell down the damn stairs. Luckily, I didn't hurt myself. But, you know. Yeah. So. Anyway, good times, though. Good times. Uh, you went to a hockey oh, game, boy. right? Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Was that a, uh, yeah, yeah. We, went, we went down uh, to Columbus. Oh boy! Uh, with my my daughter Caitlin took a. We, we do this our <laughs> annual pilgrimage. Yeah, yes, to Columbus to see the New Jersey Devils. And uh, yes, uh, I think I'm a gut for pl- punishment or <laughs> or just New Jersey doesn't like me. I don't know, man. But ah, uh, yeah, they took a beating, Timo. Oh no. I took a six to one beating, and uh, yes, sir. And Timo, they have a little cannon uh, in Columbus, <laughs> at the Blue Jackets cannon? Arena. Little yes, cannon, it's a little, yeah, it's just a little cannon yeah. that they tend to fire off every time they score, right? Okay. So <laughs> I heard that six times that evening, and uh, each one was pointed right directly at my heart. Timo. Oh. <laughs> well, I call a little cannon a twelve gauge, so I'm scared either yeah, way. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, this is quite the cannon. Yikes. But I, I, you know, the, the thing is, I love Columbus. That's why I went to art yeah. school. I love the town. I love the Blue Jackets. I, I do. I love that team, that arena. We, I was coaching. We won the state championship there. Love everything about it until I go see them whip the Devils. And you know, it's just getting to the point now where like it, it, it things have changed. You know, uh, back when they first started going down there, it wasn't like that. But now, I don't know for some odd reason they're cursed up in that place. Oh boy! Or I think it might be me because they did win one there already this season. So. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, so the return trip was not so much fun, right. but it was nice. We got to uh, want to thank my daughter Caitlin. She's she's awesome. She really uh, went out of her way again, and we got to meet some of the players. Um, oh, nice. I don't think some of them were too happy about coming out. So, but oh, we, yeah. we did we did meet a couple, and uh, it was nice. Got to meet the captain of the Devils, oh, Andy okay. Green. A nice guy, and uh, yeah, he grew up not too far from us here in oh, okay. Toledo. So yeah, so yeah, we're like kin. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> my mother, 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 right? Yeah, yeah we well, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was it was a fun trip with my daughter. Not so much fun at the game. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, I will get on my soapbox right now, Timo. Uh-oh. But I don't know it. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. did you have a beer? No, I didn't. Oh, well, Jesus. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's no. rough. That's some rough yeah. stuff right there. No whiskey? No. No, no. rough stuff no. right there. No. Yeah. No yeah. Yeah. You didn't, no. didn't huff any gasoline, did you? No. What, no. what the hell did you go no, for? No. What the hell? What are you talking <laughs> we, about here? Yeah. Uh, no, we were huffing spray paint in, no, in a, out okay. of a bag. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. I'm killing below, the ozone below, in my skull. Yeah. Below the trestle, right by the rink. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, but, uh, yeah. Busy yeah, weekend. So. Busy weekend. Yeah. Busy Good time, weekend, so. my friend. All right. Yeah. Well, I did watch a few things, Mr. Ben Harley. Now, you have been blanketed yeah. in snow. We've had some little yes. ice trickles here and there. Yeah. And uh, I have been super busy, but I tell you what, when you're like in your mid to late 40s, you can't, you can't go as long as you could when you were like 30. No. No. All right, now write this down, people, so you I know. I like to think <laughs> that I could, but no. <laughs> yeah. So I've been working my tail off during the day, doing losing some weight, Ben Harley. I'm, I'm getting back into shape. I got a little out of shape there, uh, and I'm not afraid to admit it. Don't really care too much, but I'm getting right back in there. You watch next time you see me. You're going to want to... I'm not going to say anything more. <laughs> Let's just say that it's, it's going to be good for you. So, yeah, really. um, But yeah, so but still, yeah, about 6 o'clock, maybe? I like yeah. look at things I'm going to do. My body doesn't go toward them. No. Uh, I'm like, there you go. Here I go. I'm going to go pick those books up and stack them. Uh, yeah. uh, no, I'm going to put uh, them on the old television. I'm going to sit down and relax. So, <laughs> yeah. Got to take Maybe a break. If I use a Jedi mind trick to <laughs> yeah. themselves back. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. uh, here's a few things I watched, Mr. Ben Harley. Now, first up, and we're going to talk about yeah. this. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag a little bit. Meow. Uh, yeah. The we're, we're gonna one of the movies we're gonna discuss this week as we call them our official films, the films that yeah. we p- we pick that we're both gonna watch and talk about together and kind of uh, discuss and pick apart is going to be the 2011 version of the thing. Yes. So I did watch that, of course. We're gonna talk about that in a little while, but I also watched back to back right after yeah. it. I watched the 1982 John Carpenter's The Thing. So Jim. I literally watched them <laughs> like people yes. watch Lord of the Rings. 
Okay. Yeah, they okay. Checked as I watched them back to back. And man, are they seamless. So that's kind of cool. But something I wanted to let you know that I do yeah. believe that 1982 was probably the second best year in film. I started thinking yes. about it. 82. There's some good stuff that came out in 82. And I think it's music wise, too. But that's true. Yeah. I think it kind of, yeah. it, it, it seesaws back and forth. We start with 81, go to 82, then go back to 80. Yeah. Then go up to 83, then go back to 79. Once you're past about 77, you're, you're cherry picking things like Jaws and the Exorcist yeah. and stuff like that. So, anyway, I have deemed this to be true. I just want to let everyone know so they can write down in the history books. This is how the best <laughs> years of films go. There you go. So, now it's been noted somewhere. So, let's get going, historians, and to yes. know I've spoken. Okay. So, yeah. we'll watch get it that. right, people. Right. So, we'll discuss that a little bit as we're just, uh, talking about the thing. Yeah. Uh, on on Amazon Prime, uh, I think almost everything is I watched on Amazon Prime. All but one thing I watched on Amazon Prime. All right, so uh, the strange case of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, okay. starring Jack Palance. Oh, 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 oh. oh boy! Now I told you about. Now you know I'm on a Frankenstein freak out. Oh. Yeah, I'm freaking out yeah. on Frankenstein here, and I'm getting every, I'm getting my grubby mitts and everything I can find with that walking corpse dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I told you that there it was like one of those television movie series uh, from the '70s that I watched that one Frankenstein the one with Bo Svensson in it, yeah, and Robert yeah. Foxworth. Now this has got to be a part of the same series of films. Okay, okay. it has okay. to be. I did start watching a picture of Dorian Gray. Also, I've really? not finished it. I'm only about 10 minutes in because I keep falling asleep. Now, <laughs> it's a made for television version of picture Dorian Gray's a little bit more like a soap opera than <laughs> a little sleepy. A little bit, a little, it's a little sleepy. It's a hell. I mean, you know, who needs night tall when you got it? But <laughs> this is kind of fun. It's also got Denholm Elliott in it, who I like a whole lot. This, this Dr. Okay. Jack and Mr. Hyde. Um, Palance, I think you need to see this just to see the Jack Palance into Hyde <laughs> transformation. <laughs> <laughs> I to can see, only imagine. To I see Polans try to be really kind and normal, yeah. and then to see him just go ape shit bonkers uh, <laughs> when he's high is a joy and a pleasure. Oh, it's I what can. makes life worth living, really, when you think about it. It's pretty good. And he's got a funny laugh, too. Like he's trying to be like ominous. And yeah. every time he laughed, I laughed with him and at him at the same time. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good stuff there. Uh, kind of silliness. Oh, yeah. Again, we're talking about Dark Shadows production values and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, right, it's right. okay. It's all right. Uh, watched a movie from 2008, Ben Harley, which is almost like traveling forward in time for me in movies. <laughs> yeah, that is. I mean, yeah, that's like brand new. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, watch Shiver. It's a movie called Shiver. This was yeah. just a throw a dart at the wall kind of movie on Amazon Prime. Okay. From Spain. But a f- Spain. Yes. But a feral little girl out in the, okay. out in the wilderness. Uh, it's the producers of the devil's backbone and the orphanage. So people that have done some pretty, pretty good movies, pretty good work. Um, it's really about the fear of little girl and like the mystery surrounding her. Okay. So why is she out in the woods? Who did something bad? Who did something wrong? The only problem is I have that I have with this is that it's like this grandiose mystery in this village. Okay. Okay. The little girl couldn't be more than like nine or 10. And all these flashbacks make you think that things are happening a long time ago. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's what? What? She's like a little girl. She it can't be that long ago. She was no, a, right. wasn't even a sperm yet. Come on, <laughs> you know. Uh, but besides that, uh, it's kind of fun because she's got these weird. She's got. It's one of those deals where she has like white eyes, like she's almost like blinded. And then when she yeah. gets, and then and then when she goes, when she freaks out, she gets a little wacky. Her eyes go black. So that's oh. kind of cool. That's that's all right. So yeah. the movie was all right. Um, it was okay. It's more about the mystery of the town and people trying to hide what they did to the little girl. Hide, yeah. out there, You know, stuff like that. So, um, but the little girl, there's there's a couple moments where the little girl might give you a little bit of the willies. So not, not okay. too, yeah. too bad. I just subtitled. So I wouldn't watch it while you're printing. You'll get lost like really quick. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I just talked about a Frankenstein freak out. So Mr. Ben Harley, we did have a bottle of Frankenstein wine. Ah, and we right. watched the 1931 Frankenstein with Boris Karloff in it while drinking some Frankenstein yeah. wine. So. Wow. How'd that go? Did it go well together? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. 
it is. is. Yes. Uh, I, I'm a big Colin Clyde fan. I'm telling you right now. Just, that guy, I'm, if I would have been acting with that guy, I would have had glasses with windshield wipers on him. Because I'm sure he was spitting every time he was talking with that <laughs> that strange dialect he speaks with. But uh, yeah. a lot of fun. Of course, we enjoyed watching it. So really good stuff. Yeah, there. Good. Good um, uh, let's see here. Oh, Ben Harley. Uh-oh. Ben Harley. Here's one for Uh-oh. you. Here's Hit one for it. you. Neutron, the atomic Superman. <laughs> okay. uh, this is about a, I believe this was made for Mexican television back in the right. 60s. So you know okay. we're heading down a path here of no return. <laughs> uh, so it's like a Mexican superhero who, I guess, dresses in drag as a wrestler. Oh, really? Okay. Well, he kind of dresses like a wrestler. Adrian Adonis? Uh, well, he dra- <laughs> not, I mean, drag? I don't know. I, I never figured out. He never got in a ring, but he looked yeah. like a wrestler. And he was, I guess, Mexican superheroes at one time. Like in, I mean, like I guess in the States, they all look like Superman or Batman. I yeah, guess they yeah. all looked like El Santo back in the day. Yeah, so. pretty much. Or the I Blue Demon. So, yeah. Could be Blue, Blue Demon. No or Mil Mascaris. No Mascaris. Yeah. He's got a little bit too. So it's kind of like that, except you didn't really hear anything about any uh, uh, any any wrestling. Now, what was funny is that the climactic battle with the villain, boy, oh, what a noodly fight. And it's long, man. Lots of, <laughs> lots of punching and, whoa, don't jump there, man. Come on. <laughs> You love him or you hate him? Which one is it? Let's do this. <laughs> right, you know, God, right. please. So, uh, Don't hump him. Man. Yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> forgivingly, this was only like an hour long. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a lot yeah. of boring parts to it. And uh, I can tell you uh, that I guess Neutron, the atomic Superman, was supposed to be battling some zombies. And there was uh, there was some zombies in the movie. I didn't see him battle any, though. He battled okay. the, other, the other noodly wrestler guy. He was evil. <laughs> the heel. He battled the, the heel. heel. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's see here. All right, Just moving misunderstood. On. <laughs> yes, moving on. 1989, Mr. Ben Harley. Yeah. 1989, watched on Amazon Prime, My Mom's a Werewolf. Oh, I, yeah, wait. Yeah. Who's in this, Simo? John Saxon. Yeah. Yeah, Susan Blakely, <laughs> Ruth Buzzy, and John Shook. <laughs> I uh, think I've seen this. Low I'm budget, sure. Crown International film from 89, kind of cashing in all the Teen Wolf type stuff and the cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Monster movies and stuff. Eh, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Susan Blakely's like a, a hottie for you know, yeah. like I'm gonna say hottie for a mom. She's like probably ten years younger than us in this movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, but and uh, yeah, it was a curiosity to watch from that era. You know, just kind of seeing yeah. it. It's actually better than I thought it would be, but it wasn't that great. I wanted it to, okay. once I started getting into it. I kind of wanted it to be a little better. It's kind of good music in it though. Really? Yeah, not too, not too bad of music. In it. That's good. Yeah, so that wasn't too bad. And then Ben Harley, the creme de la creme. Oh, Angio boy. and I watched out of nowhere. I pulled this out and oh, easy. Pulled this out and I, I <laughs> yeah, put on, on Amazon Prime on in high def. Oh. Let me say this again. Amazon Prime in high def. Creature, you got time there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the creature from Black Lake. Ah. Yes. Nice, yes. 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 Starting a one Dennis Fimple from King Kong. Uh, I remember I was okay. watching the 70s yeah. King Kong and Dennis Fimple was in there. And the old handsome himself, Jack Elam. Yes, sir. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. yeah, he was talking to a few people and looking at them all at the same time. It was great. <laughs> he watching a fly around the room, too. <laughs> yeah. With one eye. Yeah. So uh, I, saw him, I saw him catch a few of those flies, too, while he was at it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that was it. So got to watch a few things. That's and, good though. Tim. Yeah. That's a good movie. I mean, that was not bad. I, I like that. Yeah, it's okay. I love the I love the cover art. Yeah, for that film is great. Mm-hmm. You know, really, really good stuff. Kind of took me back. I know the first time I watched it was about, and I do believe this is the first time I watched it was about ten years ago. I somehow this one escaped me. Yeah. Back in the TV days, I'm not sure how much it played on TV. And um, I don't know, it didn't play too much around here. Didn't it? Think. Okay, so mm-hmm. no. I was a little taken back by how much of a Bigfoot type of horror film it kind of turned out. Yeah, you know, to yeah. be a little bit, but uh, now we had a good time watching it. Not too bad. Not too that bad. sounds like so, fun. What you got, Ben Harley? What you look at? Well, Tim, let's. Uh, um, well, I guess I could keep with the Bigfoot theme just a little bit here. You know, I've been <laughs> I've been really nerding out on the satellite here lately. So. Oh. You know, I'm gonna have to find look up Dermal Ridge here real soon. I'm, yeah, I'll be hovering over the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, I I went through the other day and found Boggy Creek or not Boggy Creek. I'm, yeah, yes, I did. I took that. Out. I found Boggy Creek and then I went and looked for Bluff Creek too. Okay. So uh, Boggy Creek was kind of neat. You know, I mean, you can see some things. I just I'm just kind of curious just you, where it lay. You know, are you talking about the Legend What's of Boggy that? Creek? 
Yeah. The well, movie? I just no, just the actual Boggy Creek. Oh, yeah. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then I was going like I went on the satellite too. It's the one I've been doing is Google Earth. And oh, so oh, um, I see. Yeah. I thought you meant Direct yeah. TV. No, I oh oh I got you. So you've been doing you've been doing Google Earth and you saw yeah. Earth. oh remember I drove through it coming back from Texas. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's right there by Texarkana, yes. uh, you know, <clears throat> for folk Arkansas Falk, and yep. stuff. Yeah. Yep. Falk, so it was really neat. Um yeah, just kinda, you know, looking around and then I said I actually looked up Bluff Creek too. Uh-huh. And I don't know where the exact, you know, sighting was. Mm-hmm. I Looked at a few things, but I really couldn't figure it out. But I, Bluff Creek's a pretty, pretty big uh, area. I mean, yeah. it, it encompasses a long stretch of, you know, mm-hmm. creek bed, or it's like a tributary to the Klamath or Cl- yeah River or something. Mm. So it, but it was kind of neat. I just, I, you know, I'm checking it out in the area. But man, it's it was it's just interesting. Some of the things I was doing that, you know, with Salt Fork and a couple other places in Ohio and where sightings were. To kind of look you know, at the topography. Out the area. Like looking yeah. at the topography. Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. tell you so what, whatever you're seeing. a little seeing, nerdy lately. <laughs> I was going to say, whatever you're seeing, though, is a lot bigger than it looks because oh, yeah. Yeah. you can do the, the topography of my house. And yeah. and we got a pretty big woods, and it, yeah. it it looks like the turd. You know, what I mean, like it looks like yeah. you're not oh, yeah. not as connected to a lot of other ones, but like we're like a branch, sure. a branch. No, no pun intended. Of it, yeah. <laughs> it's just funny. Uh, we did actually. I didn't mention this, and I, I'm I'm gonna bust myself out on this. We actually okay. watched part of Legend of Boggy Creek and turned it off because I can't stand it. Yeah, you know, I, I started it the other it. day too. I got just it's a little awful. ways into. Oh, it's a terrible movie. I yeah. remember even as a kid thinking it was a bad film too. It just right, but it scared me, you know. Like, right. and it also just uh, the the reason I don't really like the film that much is it's so dark. Mm-hmm. You can't see crap, and right. and that just for me. Now I guess it made it a little scarier back in the day, but I don't think they were going for that. Oh, it's just it's so dark. Let's make it dark, and you won't. But now I just think it just looked like crap it just did you know so <laughs> yeah i really you know so um but uh yeah you know i i feel you on that one yeah i feel you on that one but it's been kind of neat i just was going through like i you know bluff creek it's just yeah. it's huge i was going through and looking at it i'm like okay he keep going and going and go you know i was like wow this is and there's just a lot of wilderness out there you know there's not much towns and or roads around either you know so right. but it was just it's just been interesting for me it's my little nerdy thing i've been doing lately i've, I've so. done it a few times i've done a few times. Yeah. It's pretty cool to do that. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not trying to peek in anybody's windows or anything, you know. But <laughs> if you go over so. my old house, you can see Bigfoot, my pool. It looks exactly like a sock coming out the back of my house. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh Tim, let's see. Uh, um, I don't know if you've been watching Waco still. Are you no, still I just watched on that one episode and then I've been okay. so busy. Yeah, no. But it's okay. all right when I saw it first. Yeah. Episode. Yeah. Um, I think I'm on the third one. Uh so in the space time continuum, I think the fourth one is just about to come out. Uh-huh. But yeah, it's pretty good. You know, this one was after the raid, this episode. Oh, okay. You know, and stuff like that. What was kind of happening, you know, there. Uh, not bad. I'll report back a little bit more. Okay. Um, watched a couple things the other day I really enjoyed. Um, just on regular television. The IFC channel is pretty crazy. Right? Mm-hmm. Is that the independent film yeah. channel, right? Yeah, uh, well, you would, you would think. I mean, it yeah. used to... It's one of those channels that the name is almost like an afterthought because a lot of the yeah. stuff you see on there is not technically not independent. independent. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, right. Yeah. Well, they did. Uh, they had RoboCop marathon going on the other day, <laughs> so I watched. You know, right. I didn't get to see all of the first one. He'd already become Robo. He just became RoboCop by, when I tuned him. Uh-huh. But you know, I know RoboCop pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and and I was just laughing. You know, I was telling Billy and I. I know I've told you this before and our listeners, whatever, but yeah, I remember when that movie came out, I was like, this it looks like the dumbest movie of all time. I laughed. I thought it was the trailer. Just, I was like, this is the dumbest thing ever. Right. And I remember us going to see it and I came, I've never, I don't think I, this might have been the first time I ever ate my words, you know, yeah, like, yeah. as far as I was like, I came out thinking, this is awesome. I mean, it was, I, it, <sighs> My little head was swimming, you know. It's great with all the stuff that was going on in yeah. that film, and then and plus it was supposed, to, you know, or it does take place in Detroit or whatever, right. you know what I mean. And so that was kind of neat for us too back then. But yeah, so I finished up RoboCop one, which I love. I love the first one. I do like second the first one, one. I don't like yeah, the second, second one. At all. one eh, I don't like it. I'm sorry, I don't like it. Yeah. It, it, it for me, what they're trying to do is they're kind of taking stuff they did in the first one and just kind of not really rehashing it, but remixing it up. You know what I mean? Like, or 
I don't know. It's just not as good of a film. It's almost like know? they sp- it spends the whole time like torturing RoboCop. You know, it's like it makes yeah. it like it, it's yeah. I just I don't know. I just didn't. It wasn't as fun. I didn't. Know, it's no. almost like Predator Two. Yeah. Like I just yeah. don't like Predator Two. I don't like. I just don't mm-hmm. like that, and I don't like uh, RoboCop Two. I just didn't. Yeah. I mean, and RoboCop Three, forget it. Yeah, but yeah, I can't. You know, I don't. I didn't stick it. I, I didn't make that that one. Right. Uh, first is great though. You're right. Yeah. 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 And I enjoy the first. I mean, the first mm-hmm. one. It's nowhere near as crazy and weird as it was when I first saw it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when I first saw it, I was just my man. I just said when they when they shot him up and stuff, I was just like, you know, I I don't even know if I was speaking. You know, <laughs> like, I right. was just like, ah, like you know what the, what's going on? You know, yeah. like just unreal. Um, but but a good movie too, and it's right. funny because I like that '70s show. It's a good show, you know. I do like it. Uh-huh. Um, but I love Red Foreman. Man. I love you know his character, and it's funny that was wait you know, first... Kurtwood Smith, yeah, the guy yeah. The, the the bald guy, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, I like his, him, yeah, yeah. That's his first, the first time I'd ever seen him uh-huh. to my in my memory, you know. Uh-huh. And I love him in RoboCop. Mm-hmm. You know, I just think he's great. He's such a great asshole. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know absolutely. what I mean? Yeah. And I just, I've always liked his character because of RoboCop first off, you know sure. what I mean? So, but yeah, so it was a lot of fun to watch that the other day, you know, nice. um, kind of reminiscing a little bit and yeah. there's the, they, they put it out there a lot. There's the cussing and everything. Oh, yeah. It was the so, 80s. Yeah. It was the yeah. 80s. It was, the gloves were off. Yeah. Long, yeah. And long, I could, through spraying lead, it was off. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't, well, I couldn't believe it was on, on TV, regular television, you know, they were, there was cussing in it. Oh, really? No kidding. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Tim, oh, r- real quick, let me run through these. Um, yeah. We'll stay with the horror type stuff. Now, I know you and I talked about this. I have a I have a bone tomahawk to pick with you. Tim. Oh, no. Oh, lordy. <laughs> lordy. Yeah. So I did watch Bone Tomahawk All right. recently. I know you and I texted back and forth a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't have so much of a bone tomahawk to pick with you, <laughs> Timo, but I have a little bit to pick with the end of that movie. I went to this movie wanting to see it, and I was interested. I'm like, you know, a uh, horror western man. Yeah. I, you know, that's two of my favorite things mm-hmm. as far as movies and you know whatever. It's and kind of a cross you, between the Searchers and the Hills Have Eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you put it together, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. And I will say, uh, for three quarters of this movie, I was, I was pretty happy. I just think the last quarter of this film once, I guess I don't know if I want to give it away if people still want to see it, but uh, it's just, I, I don't. I don't know. The the ending just for me it was kind of it went off the cliff like the buffaloes went off the cliff. It just I uh, you know what I mean? Like it led me it led me all the way to the cliff and yeah. then there it was. And I just I don't know. I I it, I can't say it was a horrible ending. It just for me it went off the rails. And I think I, it, they just they could have done it better. Yeah. I just think mm-hmm. what they showed me it was almost like you're giving me the slow simmer Build, build, build. But then, then the payoff wasn't worth what I went through. Kind of, but I still enjoyed the rest of it. Right. I mean, it's, I enjoy the story. The guy, I can't think of his name offhand, but the the guy is the same guy that did that that brawl in Cell Block ninety nine. Yeah. Very similar. Where it's a very matter of fact film. Yeah. They're not trying to like uh, juice up the. No. Scene. They they show you what's <laughs> happening. Yeah. I mean, it's just like here's camera. Boom. It, this has yep. happened. Uh, boom yeah. camera this happened and they don't pull punches at all and oh. it doesn't and just because there's, there's a, a star of a film does not mean they're going to make <laughs> it through the movie no. and stuff like uh-huh. that and that's what this guy is i i would what i would do is watch cell black or or uh brawl and cell black 99 then go back yeah. later and watch bone tomahawk again knowing what's going to happen and see if yeah. you like it more yeah i just think that the the Things at the end, mm-hmm. they just, it just it, once it got there, it just seemed like let's do this and just get it over with. Now there's a scene in this film that just uh, it it stuck with me, and I just I uh, I just at that point too, I was well, I'd had enough. Yeah, both films are pretty <laughs> gory. They're pretty gory. I mean, you know, yeah, so, this was yeah. just something I don't I, I can't take that anymore. I just mm-hmm. can't. I, mm-hmm. I just for me, it's just oh man. I and but anyways, I think. I, you know, I still could give it, you know, three out of four stars. It would have been four stars for me if the ending mm-hmm. was just done different. And uh, it to me, you know, to, I don't know. For me, it went from they went, those were like the natives from Gilligan's Island to me. I don't know. It right. just, it didn't, it didn't, I wasn't 
At first, I was scared when the first one came in the first beginning of the movie and got Sid Haig. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> you know, and right. this has some great actors and it has mm-hmm. my doppelganger, you know, my doppelganger's in yep. it. You yep. know, he's mm-hmm. in it and stuff. So, but I, I just, I don't know. I was a little let down. Watch, let watch. Down, I think it's still on Prime. I used to yeah. watch Brawl and so you'll, you'll enjoy it. It's, yeah. it's very matter of fact, but it's, it's a different kind of movie. But sure. I mean, sure. There's a couple of things in that movie that have stuck with me too, and things don't stick with me at all. Like nothing yeah. in Bone, nothing in Bone Tomahawk Ooh. really stuck with Ooh. me that much. But some, a couple of things in Bruss, and it was just fighting stuff. Oh, That's what's there's funny. just one thing yeah. in Bone Tomahawk that stuck with me, and I'm just I I. Uh, I, uh, I it, the movie stuck with me because I know there's a lot of like, oh wow, you don't see that very yeah. much in movies, you know, stuff like that. So I know there's some there's some yeah. shocking things. I just right. thought it was a different type of western. It, is. it wasn't so grandiose. And, right. and at first, it's kind of like, man, this looks really kind. It, it seemed really kind of low budget at first, but then as the movie went on, it it didn't. It just this is what it is, mm-hmm. you know. This is you're not getting all this, you know. This is not your typical western but it is like that's probably more how it would have been than oh yeah you know what i mean exactly you know i'm just saying it it didn't have hundreds of extras and big sweeping you know shots and stuff like that you know it just but and i like that it took me a second but then i started to enjoy it i warmed up to it right you know um it's not yeah it's not a barn burner movie at all it's not it's like i I said like kurt russell kurt russell to me could like like you with some of the guy he could read the phone book and i'd still be into it right or he could act out a worm wrestle and i don't know i just i'm (laughs) you know i like and i like him and it it, it goes back to the thing and and snake pliskin and all that stuff and but yeah so uh tim i'm getting a little long-winded there let me just wrap up two things here um or three things, but real fast. Uh, I saw a movie. It was just called. You might know more about this. It's just. I swear it was just called the possession or possession. Yeah. Um, and I, it had to come out here recently because it has the guy who's like super popular now. That's in The Walking Dead. Uh, he's also was in Watchmen as the um, comedian. Oh, you mean the guy that plays Negan or Negan or whatever the guy? Yeah, name. Um, I like it. He's a great actor. Yeah. He also played. Bruce Wayne's dad. He played okay. uh, in in the Batman Superman briefly. Yeah, great actor. I like. Yeah, him. I know you're good. talking about. He's yeah. good. So he was in this movie. It's like his daughter gets possession. They, he like buys a box at a. That's a true sale. story. It's it happened it? here in Missouri. Did it really? Okay. Yeah, as a Sam, Sam Raimi produced that movie that you're talking about. Really? I didn't really yeah. enjoy the movie very much, but yeah, if you actually read the real story, I missed the first maybe I don't know twenty minutes of okay. it, but I, I did watch the rest of it. If so. you read like the real story of that, that's that's actually yeah. kind of weird. It's like, oh, man, it's just a box, yeah. it's a, a, a Dybbuk box. It's a Jewish yeah. thing, and they and it's, there was like a Jewish demon attached to it, and it was yeah. Conjured up during World War II to actually go against the Nazis, believe it or not. This Ooh. is in real life. This is what happened. Yeah. Uh, the Dybbuk box is still around. I believe it's buried somewhere right now, somewhere in Missouri. Oh. That the, the guy just better not nobody, be a thermal ridge. Right? <laughs> you know, well, I'm in Illinois, so I'm I'm safe. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'm yeah. on the Illinois right, side. Yeah. You know, but, right, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I I did not enjoy the movie very much. Uh, I I, I thought it was okay. okay. When I came into it, it was you know, and having. <laughs> Having little girls, you know, or having girls and stuff, I just, you know, it's a little, I, you know, that drew me towards it a little right. bit more too, you know, and it reminded me a little bit of the little girl reminded me of Zoe a little, so I, you know, but as far as movies, it's okay, it was yeah. all right. Oh, it was I don't worst really, yeah, yeah. I don't really get into those much anymore because there are. We've talked about this before. It's just the way they present the the ghost or and or the demons. entities yeah. or the demons to me it's just it's all flashing lights and weird face ah, mm-hmm. i don't get it I, i'm okay yeah give me something different right <laughs> i'm tired of watching the nine inch nails video <laughs> right. well, let's get to our official films mr ben harley all right Timo. Right. now we did talk about we're going to talk about the thing from 2011 <laughs> the prequel but first up mr ben harley let's yes. get this rolling here from 1954 we have Tobor the Great. <laughs> Which means robot spelled backwards. <laughs> it sure right? is a robot spelled backwards. How clever of them. Yeah. All right. Got, a, got a, a storyline here. It's a little longer. I have not read this. You know, I'm, I'm always in for it when this happens. So yeah, let me yeah. Get, yeah. Well, it doesn't matter if I read. It's movie guys. So let yeah, me get movie, movie guy, guy out. He's not rehearsed. He's just waking up from a long bender. 
Uh, <laughs> so let's let's see what we got here for movie guy. Okay, okay, movie guy, give us the, the storyline to Tobor the Great. Here we Tobor. go. Tobor. To avoid the life-threatening dangers of man's space exploration, Professor Nordstrom, Taylor Holmes, quicksand, <laughs> creates a highly advanced form of artificial intelligence capable of piloting a starship to other worlds. In order to transmit <laughs> alien data, the extraordinary robot is infused with a powerful telepathic device that enables it to instantly read and even feel emotions. Danger strikes when a sinister band of covert agents kidnaps Gage. Billy Chapin, the Knight of the Hunter. Ah, did you notice that was a kid from Knight of the Hunter? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah he looked super familiar. Yeah, that's what he was. Yeah, it was Knight of the Hunter. Yeah. Yep. Um, nice. All right, here we go. The professor's 10-year-old grandson, but Gage has a powerful ally, for he has developed a psychic emotional bond with his grandfather's robot, Tobor. And now Gage's captors must suffer the wrath of his protective friend and face a mechanical monstrosity bent on a killing rampage of revenge and destruction. (laughs) (laughs) Serial and TV veteran Lee Sholem, Superman and the Mole Men, directed Uh this cult classic shot by the great John L. Russell, Psycho, and starring Charles Drake. It came from outer space. Karen Booth, Jungle Man Eaters, <laughs> <laughs> and Stephen right, round, Gray, round. Gilda. All right. Um, yes, it's Robot Backwards, Tobar the Great, 1954. Yes. Uh, yes, Charles Drake from It Came From Outer Space. He's also in Harvey, actually. Okay. And you mentioned Billy Chapin was the young gentleman from Night of the Hunter. Uh, yes, directed by Lee Shalom. Uh, he actually directed the Mystery Science Theater classic Catalina Caper. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Nice. He actually, but he did uh, over 1,300 features and TV shows. So he's a busy guy. Wow. He knew what he was yeah. doing. Yeah. So basically, they're... Yeah, they're going to be doing some space exploration, but they don't think humans can cut it. They don't think humans can do yeah. it. So they're basically building uh, Tobar to be an astronaut. Yeah. Of some yeah. of some sort. And then the stupid kid fiddles with the remote and sends Tobar an apocalyptic <laughs> furniture massacre. <laughs> yeah. Right? Turn but, drapes down. Yeah. But he diligently sleeps with his twenty two close by his bed. Yeah. If you notice that in the film also. Yeah. This is definitely nineteen fifty four, Mr. Ben Harley. I'm gonna send you <laughs> off with this. Tell me what you think about Tobar. But uh, I did Tobar. kind of I did kind of th- think about during the film we got a little bit of the Iron Giant feel. A little bit, this, yeah. Part yeah. of this, you and know? you can't go wrong with that. No, you, you know, well, that's, that's, no, you can't. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you can steer it wrong. But <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure, you yeah. blow things up. But yeah, um, yeah. You know, to us, this is the first time I've seen this film too, and uh, I've heard of this before. Uh-huh. But yeah, uh, it's the first time I've seen it. Um, not eh, not too too bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen some Tobar the Great like uh, robots too at conventions. Uh-huh. Like, years ago and stuff like that. <laughs> uh-huh. um, but uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. It, it's The robot itself's not too bad. I, I kind of think he's, he's cool looking. I thought it was a heating and cooling apparatus. <laughs> yeah. I just been building a house. So I, I, I could identify almost every part of yeah. that damn robot. But you're right. Yeah. For 1954, he's pretty standard stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's nice because this, that robot, it moves okay too. You know, it can, it actually can move. <laughs> a little bit. Okay. Yeah. A mm-hmm. little bit. It's a little top heavy. But other than that, but the movie itself's not too bad. Yeah, there's like um, basically you had two guys of the same mind that they don't really they don't think that man should go into space and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So they they team up, and the one yeah the older gentleman who has Tobar mm-hmm. to design Tobar yeah right his his grandson or whatever. Yeah, it's funny because they keep saying yes he's a genius he's a genius the whole time like right. he does get the control for Tobar yeah like you say he goes mad and then. But he, he's able to get it under control and put back right before he gets busted. But he does still get in trouble yeah. for doing it. But it's funny. It's a happy trouble. Yeah, you know, like, oh, that little stinker. Like, ass. Yeah, oh, man, that thing. <laughs> the robot <laughs> tore that house up, man. Yeah. It's funny. He, like he was too cumbersome to sit on furniture. So, fuck yeah. it, I'm just going to destroy this <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah. I hate this couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. I hate this couch. But, um... You know, uh, it has enough, like, little bit of intrigue, too, because there's another little smarmy guy that's trying to 
Is he just trying to get the not the formula, but the the plans? Just from, how what what makes Tobar tick? Basically, yeah, I think is where they're yeah yeah the, that villain spy guy is totally the Raiders Lost Heart guy. A little bit yeah, heavier than he? that guy. Oh, you <laughs> yeah, remind me yeah. exactly that guy. Yeah, the yeah. melted face guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, it, like I said, it's got enough a little bit of intrigue and stuff, mm. and that it, it's it's not a bad little film. I kind of like the way it ends, but it oh, kind of yeah. ties itself a nice little bow at the end because Tobar really saves the day and and uh, proves to to the the brass mm-hmm. or the military and uh, what's their uh, uh, senator or something there that it can handle. It can. It can handle <laughs> the, uh, under pressure or reacting under pressure. Yes. Or thinking under in pressure. situations, so, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, Amazingly, wow. this was written by Philip McDonald, who wrote Sahara, the Body Snatcher, the old Val oh, Luton wow. Body Snatcher movie with Boris Karloff in wow. it, and uh, a yeah. little little Hitchcock movie called Rebecca. Uh, that starred oh, Lawrence wow. Olivier. <laughs> so the guy who wrote now, guy, remember yeah. this was this was back in the studio system where you basically put your suit and tie on, went to work, and your work was writing yeah. or acting or directing or something right. like that. Right. Um, yeah, I died poor in an apartment somewhere, yeah. destitute. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, there's some pretty high tech '50s gadgets, some lots of oscopes yeah. galore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. and uh, one hell of an informative but overblown security system. Yeah, the there, are sure. yeah. there are intruders in the backyard. There are intruders. It's like in the intruders yeah. kept in. They're shooting. halfway to the house. They're halfway to. And then it's like now they're making their way to the house. They're making their way to the house. Uh, yeah, and they scare them off like with every, fake every lightning bo- and thunder. Yeah. Oh, what do you say? He goes, "Yeah, I, that's I got that right from the movie studio. That's like the shores of Iwo Jima or something." <laughs> like, right. like what? The, you got right. that from there? But yeah. uh you know, it's funny too. Like everybody's got a gun, but the mom, like the, the, the little boy, <laughs> everybody's got coffee. a gun. Yeah, yeah. The groundskeeper, the grandpa, the you know, the other side. They all got right. You know, they're ready to go. They're packing. <laughs> right. So, but yeah, I just you know, it's it, it was an interesting little movie, robot movie for me. I yeah. love robot movies. I'm a big robot fan. You know, I'm a you know, even spelled backwards, <laughs> it's still fun. There's some, I tell you what though, there especially toward the end, there are some laugh out loud. Moments. Oh yeah, I mean laugh. Oh, out. when he's driving the jeep. Oh my killed. god, when he got in the jeep it. and the the <laughs> scientist contacts him with his trusty pencil and foil antenna hat, the yeah, little yeah. wire thing going across. But the goddamn yeah. thing is still clumsy. I mean, okay, the scientist is is. It's controlling Tobar. He controls him to beat his way through his bookshelf doors, his Murphy oh, doors. Yeah. Then he yeah. beats his way through the wall of the house. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then whenever, and then whenever uh, the bad guy, the the writer's lost art guy, is running out of the barn or wherever they're at, he bothers yeah. to open the door. Yeah, he, I don't even notice that, and I'm like, "What? Why didn't he knock that door down? Yeah. What the hell, you know?" So he basically destroys his own his own house. Tell you what, though, yeah. that tow bar has got a hell of a right hook and a left slap face. Sure oh, he can slap it. you silly. He does oh, that. Yeah, he does a little Three Stooges little nose grab too. There, yeah, he, he, does did. That. he did. He yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. And just on a personal note, between the two of us here. Sh- yeah. sh- this one, he had a yeah. pretty sweet antenna on his shoulder. <laughs> he sure did. Ben too. Harley, I looked over at Angio and said, "You know what I have?" She's like, "What's that?" I go, "I've got, an, I've got antenna envy." So I mean, yeah, That's it right. was, it was something else. But uh, I actually, honestly, though, the movie it was a little draggy here or there because yeah. it's. Yeah. I told Angie, I said, you know, we usually watch more of a drive-in movie. This is more of a matinee movie. Like the yes. kids' matinees back in the 50s. Yeah. This is more of a kids' movie that could be played at a drive-in because there's just enough to keep an adult watching, but it's mostly a kids' sci-fi yeah. action-adventure kind of yep. kind of film. It was okay. I, I But the end of it really did save it. I mean, when, when Tobar went, <laughs> went bananas at the end, <laughs> yeah. I was I was laughing. Um, I was sitting up, leaning toward the television with a grin on my face. I thought it was hilarious. I loved oh, yeah. it when that was happening. Uh, so. You know, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, Timo, either. But, you know, I think when a giant metal man, monster, or robot was coming at me, my first move is not going to be to try to punch it in the bread basket. Not- you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's good, too. Yeah. No, I just, that made me laugh. I, I got a kick out of that. Yeah. And I want to admit, Timo, that fight there, the, the fight 
fight that was there at the end was quite a good fight. It wasn't as noodly right. as most of the ones we see through from this time. Right. <laughs> oh, period. Yeah. And stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, good stuff. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to give it just a, a uh, kind of a mild. I mean, you know, I'm gonna get a mild grape ape up because it was fun and it was funny. Yeah. I, but it is very kid movie like in certain parts. And it gets a little groany in those parts. I was kind of cool to see the kid from Night of the Hunter, yeah. you know, in yeah. doing that. But um, I think that was I think Night of the Hunter was fifty five. It was fifty four. So right around this time, okay, around the same time he was in this. I'm I'm gonna like I said, I'm gonna give it a mild grape ape up. Uh, the end is laugh out loud funny. I mean, so that's yeah, kind of yeah. worth it to watch. What are you gonna do? Uh, about the same, Timo. Uh, <laughs> it's not my favorite robot. Uh, movie, but I still I enjoyed it. Yeah, like you said, the ending was pretty fun. Right, and to see him driving a jeep and and knocking guys for a loop was kind of fun <laughs> right. too. So. Right. So, all right, let's uh, let's move on to uh, our next official film, Mr. Ben Harley. I think this yeah. is more. We just want to have a discussion. Uh, well, let's let's do this. Uh, the Thing from 2011. This was the prequel yeah. to the thing that we would not know it was a prequel unless you knew the first movie and realized what was happening yeah. in it. Um, this is yeah. I, well, here, let me let me get Movie Guy out. Just do a real quick yeah. synopsis just so we can keep it Back official. in here, Movie Guy. How about that? Yeah. All right, here we go. I'm yeah. going. All right, here we go. <laughs> At an Antarctica research site, the discovery of an alien craft leads to a confrontation between graduate student Kate Lloyd and scientist Dr. Sander Helverson. Oh, that's a stupid, stupid storyline. Um, yeah, that is. All right, if anybody knows this plot of the thing... I, I, we don't really want to go through this with everybody, but if you know the plot of the thing, this is the prequel leading directly up to the second yeah. that John Carpenter's The Thing begins. So this movie also takes place in 1982. This, to me, is a fascinating movie to talk about and to watch because of exactly what it is. It's a prequel, sure. but, man, it's yeah. a prequel. And, I mean, yes. they take care into making the sets. Okay, I mean, let, me, let me backtrack a little bit. Yeah. Just in case, all right? Just in case, let's just get this. And just in <laughs> okay. case, and John Carpenter is a thing. Uh, they get a, they they go to a Norwegian Swedes. <laughs> yeah, Swedes. They go to a Norwegian <laughs> base that had already been accosted by the thing. All right, yeah. and they take a they take a, a monster back with them, and that's how it attacks Kurt Russell's uh, research base. Lots of, lots of research yeah. bases down there for being desolate. And <laughs> yeah, pretty. So this is what happened at the Norwegian site. Basically, a yeah. day or two before John Carpenter's The Thing starts. And it yeah. leads right up to the very first shots of John Carpenter's The Thing. So, mm -hmm. that being said, they took a hell of a lot of care. Okay? Yes. I mean, a lot of care. Even with the sets, with how the victims are splayed out. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, everything. I mean, just... Well, just... Just the, the the layout of the camp, yes. the, the clothes, yeah. the way the way everybody kind of looks. Too. The helicopters. I the mean, helicopters. everything is the same. The it's, dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The I gun. Mean, <laughs> yeah, and and immediately you have me paying attention. Immediately yeah, yeah. you know that whether you're gonna like this or not, this is the, if this if you ain't gonna like this one, you ain't gonna like them. The music helps too, Tim. Yeah, and they have a little bit that yes, a lot. Do, 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 do. Yes, they have some of the same music. Yep. Um, and then they add, I think, a little bit more to. I think, yeah. I think, but it's yeah, very, it, it, it's it. very similar. And uh, and yeah, they do use it. And was that Ennio Morricone? I think Ennio Morricone did the. Did you know, the, that's my dude. Yes, I think that that's the guy who did the music, right? I'm pretty sure. Like, yeah. Okay, so all that being set up, it seems like Harley and I, uh, we're going to start talking about a little bit about the effects because what you really yeah. loved about the effects and the John Carpenter's or what you really loved about John Carpenter's excuse me in 82 was the effects were just for that time outstanding and to be honest with you yeah. again remember I watched them back to back like a yeah. Lord of the Rings freak out marathon thing. yeah, yeah and they're still out. really good they're they yeah. hold up really good they, there's some things that maybe could have been touched up here or there like but I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad they didn't go yeah. Spielberg and start touching up everything. Um, right. But I'm going to start with this because the effects in the 2011, all right, they were supposed yes. to be all practical. And the studio, from what I could gather, uh, said, no, 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 no. We, we need to add some CG to kind of smooth some of this out. It's not really working. So a lot of the practical effects got edited out. And the team who was doing the effects 
Yeah. I do believe the practical stuff. They ended up making a film called, I think it's called Harbinger Down with Lance Hendrickson in it. Then they okay. got kind of upset they had all this leftover stuff they were going to use for the <laughs> yeah. thing, and they used it for a different film. I will say that film is interesting for that fact. It's not a great okay. movie, though. It's it's like it's kind of like disappointing, actually, a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, in the, so we got a little bit more CGI in this, okay? But here's the two things. A, going back and watching this, yeah. the CG was a lot better than I remembered it. It was a lot yeah, better. Maybe because I had such a low opinion about it the first time coming in, I expected nothing. I was like, wait, this isn't that bad. And then yeah. also, I'm just telling you, the story is phenomenal. It's great. Very similar to the first one. And I've said this for a long time. I'm going I'm to hand this off. Trust me. I'm going to hand this off to you here. Oh, you're finally. The, if you buy Who Goes There, one of the editions of Who Goes There, which is what this these movies are based off of, the, the yeah. John, John Campbell book. In the back of it, there is a script. That was written, I forgive me, I do not know the name of the writer, but it was written by the guy who wrote the script, I believe, for Logan's Run. And in 77 yeah. or 78, he did a treatment for the thing. Okay? It was not the one that was used by John Carpenter. But Lord help me, this <laughs> movie really reminds me of that script because I read it. Okay. And this movie really reminds me of that script. And I have never heard anybody ever say anything, never done. And I'm always curious if I had who goes there and I saw that script at the back. If I were a screenwriter and I wanted to go back to the source material. Yeah. And I happen to have the same edition of that book, which is well known on Amazon. It's the it's the best one to buy. I might might copy a little. I might put yeah, a little. Yeah. And I don't know that that happened, but boy, it really seemed like it a whole lot. Now, sure. those are my initial thoughts, Ben Harley. Run with this because I know you got things to say. Yeah, well, um, this is only the second time I've I've seen this. And I did go to the theater. It's only the second time you've it. seen this? Yeah. I did yeah. not know. It's like the third or fourth yeah. for me. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah. yeah sorry. And um, yeah, you know, I and I had gone to the theater to see this and I... It's probably, I don't know. There's been a few movies over the years that I have really wanted to see, but I'm not sure any more than this one, uh -huh. really, you know. Because, and I, I will say the thing, the 82 Carpenter thing is my, it's in my top five, mm -hmm. not only just horror movies, but probably favorite movies ever. I it's, just, yeah, yeah. There's just something about that movie, just mm -hmm. the way that everything is laid out. I won't go into it too much, but I just, I don't know. It just, everything about that film for me, I love. So going to this one, I, you know, I probably had high expectations and that weren't met. Mm -hmm. But going back and watching this again, now what I did, Tim, so, okay, this is the second and a half time I watched this. Okay. The All other right. day when you and I talked about it, I'd watched half of it. And then I couldn't find the disc, so I rented it real quick mm. and watched it all over again. Okay. And which was good. I'm glad I did. Okay. Uh, you know, so um, my problem, I guess, in the... Th the thing, <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> is this movie for me is good. It's it's a great movie all around. Okay, right. And for me, and I, I've had problems with this lately, but it, it, this movie is a big one for me. It gets to a certain point, and then it kind of it starts to. It's like a balloon that's going up, and you expect a pop, boom, yeah, excitement. Mm -hmm. It's like a balloon going up. Shh, and then all of a sudden it starts to go down. Mm -hmm. And that's and, and I don't like that fact sometimes, but uh -huh. I try to get over it. I try not to think about it. But this movie did the first time I saw it. So this time going in, I'm trying, I'm really trying hard. And and a lot of it has to do with the effects. Now, um, I'm a huge you know this, Tim. I'm a huge Rob Botine fan. Mm -hmm. I love Rob Botine. I love his stuff. He was a big influence on me when I was younger, too. <laughs> um, so I think what what the big problem is with this prequel and it being the the computer generated stuff is I can't feel it now there's a couple scenes like there's two or three scenes that it looks wonderful it really does it looks just almost like Botine stuff you can tell it's computer but it still looks really good right. and then it, get, it gets to a point where there's a woman who splits in half <laughs> and starts chasing the one girl around and from that point on I just it it it's hard for me. It, the movie loses its steam, not the movie itself, right. but the experience. It, I guess does that make it sense? Takes you for, out of it. Is what you're saying? A little bit. Yeah. Now I think I I do think in my heart of hearts, if they would have done practical effects, I would have enjoyed this movie way way more. Mm -hmm. It's the effects that take it away from me, and it's only because now 
Now, are the practical effects as good as these other ones? Maybe not. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know. But I, Botine stuff and the stuff from the original, or from, not the original, but the 82 thing, is I can feel it. You don't understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I can feel it. It looks real to me. It it And it might look even a little more bizarre, mm-hmm. but I feel it. There's parts like where the hand thing comes out and it looks like a, a Venus fly trap and it's mm-hmm. coming at you. I can feel that. I just feel like it. Now, I know that's a special effect. Is it a real monster? No, it's not. But you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I just, for some reason, and that movie affected me because of the effects too. Right. I mean, the acting was way beyond, when I first saw it was way beyond me. I didn't start to enjoy the acting until I got older, mm-hmm. you know? And I just, I mean, I, cause it was so fluid. I didn't really realize how good it was. You know what I'm saying? I, right. I love the characters. So this one just, that's what was hard for me. But I think going back and watching this again, Timo, it's, uh, I like, I, I gravitate a little bit more towards the characters. They're a little stiffer than the Carpenter characters. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think there's bit? more of them. I think there's more people. And I think some, yeah. being that there a lot of them are Norwegian, because there are some Americans yeah. that are with them too, that they're yeah. Norwegian, that it's kind of a little bit different. What I find yes. fascinating about the actual written story, what, what, I, that, that's what blows me away, is I think the, yeah. the written story is really good, is how yeah. they kind of keep away from the exact same things from Carpenters, but yet... It's different a little bit, and I kind of yeah. like that in yeah. those kinds of movies. I do but, too. But yeah. I think that what's interesting is you don't really know who's going to live and die. Like it's no. not, you, uh-huh. you, you never really. There's never a a guaranteed star of this film, except for Mary Elizabeth Winstead in this movie. Right, it's really right. the only person who is like that. Um, the Joel Egerton character is kind of a McCready, but yeah. not really. He's he he does a couple of McCready things in the movie. Like he gets yeah. lost for a little while and stuff. That's a good part too, where the yeah. helicopter goes off and the thing is in the helicopter trying to get back to civilization oh. and it crashes. And then Egerton awesome. comes back and you, know, you don't know yeah. anything about him. Here's, here's another thing real quick. Um, and I think this might've been explained a little bit. So I might be answering my yeah. own question, but I do have a problem with this. I want to know how an organism that primal builds an interspe- interstellar ship. <laughs> yeah. Only to crash yeah. it in the Antarctica? Yeah. And the only thing yeah. I think of, well, unless the thing was taking over a ship. Unless the thing yeah. was on a ship taking over and then it I get that. So I almost answered that, that, yeah. I almost answered yeah. my own question. Um It's a good point though. Yeah. I mean, um I, uh, the director I don't know anything about him. The only thing I I kind of looked a little bit to see I can't forget I ain't trying to pronounce his name. I'm American. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Guns and glory and guts. All right. I can't pronounce that yeah. many consonants in, in a row. Um he worked uh, he worked on the as a cameraman or something on the movie Amsterdam, which I just was talking about, but the guy yeah. in, the, in the fish man out or the scuba outfit going around Amsterdam <laughs> killing people. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, there's just something about this. It's like it's a, it's an enigma to me. I I, yeah. I almost protect this film because first of all, it's made in the last ten years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just really like it. I think it's worthy. I think the actual story leading up to carpenters is perfect. I just yeah. think it's perfect. I mean, the effects are almost an afterthought to me now because yeah. the effects stand out so much in carpenter. Look, I'm not saying it's better than carpenters movie. I'm saying it's worthy of oh, allowing yeah. you yeah. to see what happened at this Norwegian site and watching it back to back. Like we did will blow you away. Yeah. It'll blow you away. You, there are things that details that you don't even notice unless you literally within 24 hours watch both movies. Yeah. You know, that's one thing that, that did kind of save a lot of this film for me at first, when I first saw it was that was those aspects. Yeah. Watching it uh, for the second time, I even appreciated it even more. Um, I just think I, I would give this four stars, but I can't because of the thing and that and for me that's the only thing that upset me as like because with the other movies as much as i like all the actors and mccready and all that stuff the monster was so much it was just to me it was so creepy it just in this one it, i don't know it just yeah i don't know i hate it because i want to like this movie so much more and i did enjoy it the second time mm-hmm. i put all i tried to put all that stuff aside mm-hmm. and but the first half of the movie, the effects weren't were okay. The second half, I just I I uh, was annoyed by See, they them. They didn't and, bother uh, me. This the one yeah. you, it was, is, when the chick splits in half is that 
Is that, does that, 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 also, that's, that's, is that where she turns into like the walking on all fours thing? Yeah. That, yeah, that, that one stood out to me the first time I saw it. It's yeah. kind of like, it just did, it looked liquid and almost, I yeah. know what they were going for, but you're almost overdoing it in a way. I didn't, I didn't need to see it that much where, yeah, it just, and there's a scene at the end when they're in the actual UFO and, or the ship and uh, he's chasing her, or it's chasing her, and it still looks just, it's just, I don't know, it's just hokey Listen, to me, I, I don't know. There's a couple of things here, and see if you agree with me. Let, let's start Let's start with the effects, okay? Here's a problem that old fogies like us have with the effects. Yeah. I am never going to be impressed with anything anyone does with CG unless it looks like it's in frame. Yeah. It doesn't right. matter if it's liquid, if it's eyes moving all around. You're overdoing it to the point where you're taking people out of it and like, yeah, that's computer shit. That's computer shit. Yeah. Now you do something like that with a practical effect. I'm gonna come over to your house and shake your hand. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna. That's that's. I'm, I'm gonna be. Well, blown I mean, Rob Bottin almost died making. Oh that. yeah, it was like what on cocaine and chocolate yeah. and yeah, he, he was like on <laughs> Pepsi Cola. Yeah, and he was on Snicker bars. Any, any kind of upper like, you could find. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah, doing it for a couple of years and almost died. Like had to be right. hospitalized. But, but my thing is too much. Do, well, well, one quick. The second thing yeah. though, do you do you think that again, old fogies like us are so yeah. bitter about how things have changed in a way? Not in like the generation before us would take Howard Hawks the thing, yeah. and and they do. Our good friend Danny Hicks, he he likes the Howard Hawks version. He doesn't really like John Carpenter's version. Yeah. And yeah. and I, I I can't believe that it's hard for me to understand. I love the <laughs> Howard Hawks version. I just watched it two I weeks ago. Yeah, it's good. So yeah. I've seen all three yeah, of these. Good. Another freak out. I've freak seen all three. I, I really do like it a whole lot. But I don't doesn't take away from the John Carpenter one. No. And do you think that we're so bitter about some of this that once you see CG, it just shuts your mind down? I mean, because you're In so tired way, of yeah. it. Um, yeah. I really well, do. I her? just think there's, they can do yeah. so much that it's not impressive. Right. Nothing's right. impressive. I'm sure they could do the practical effects and, and, and blow your mind away nowadays. They just mm. blow your head right off your shoulder. I agree. Not literally. <laughs> you know, right. It's just like, right. uh, I mean, literally, not figuratively, but like I'm saying, like, um, what was hard for me, Tim, on you and I talked about this with this movie is when you're showing me something that's supposed to take place. Before the movie that I that is twenty thirty years old, right? You're showing me something that's supposed to take place before that film, but you have new shiny toys in it. No, it's not to me. You're showing me something that's supposed to be better than what I saw before. It doesn't jive for me. It makes it, my right. brain can't. So that's why this doesn't to me. When I see the thing, it doesn't feel like a prequel. Now, when they're showing me stuff. Like the helicopter and and all the other scenes, you know, and stuff that they're tying the uh, the movies together with, I'm in. Right. But when you show me something like that, the, where the monster is completely different or it's more new and this newfangled, no, I can't. I can't. My mind can't separate it. But but don't, don't you also? Can't, I mean, and I know you know this, but yeah. The one thing that is n kind of forgives it for me is that even in Carpenters, there the thing doesn't look like anything. No. He's changing. It's, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's changing in that movie too, to where it's yeah. like a spider yeah. head. It's a, yeah. it's like you said, like a Venus flytrap. It's got two big giant yeah. arms that come up. It's yeah. got, uh, it's got dog head coming. I mean, it just it yeah. changes from scene to scene, which is brilliant. Yeah. And we we yeah. had never seen that in a film back in eighty two. There no. was no way you'd ever seen anything like that. And that's something no. that blew us all away and scared the fuck out of us. We didn't know what we were afraid of. We didn't know what the hell it was. Right. Show yourself, you know, show yourself. Well, it is. It's yeah, just yeah. it's a it's a glob of. <laughs> Yeah. Whatever. It's it's going to take you over and turn you into something else. Um. So that I, I to honestly for me, that's I think why I forgive it more because in my mind I'm like it didn't look like anything in the first one, and because right. the effects, uh, I don't think it takes away from Botines. I think when you get to Botines, it just becomes a more tight, uh, yeah. claustro a little more claustrophobic. Yeah. I think Carpenter's is more claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. First of all, there's no women. Yeah, in Carpenters, right. there's less characters. Uh, I don't yeah. mean chauvinist about that. I'm saying that less. I mean, that just makes it more claustrophobic to it, me. I it mean, feels it, it makes it much more lonely. Yes, so that, you could feel lonely, the loneliness. There you go. Or yes, the, yeah. That's a really Lovely. interesting way of thinking about. It. I never even thought about that. Yeah. That a woman, I'd be a little lonely, wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, wouldn't yeah. we all? I don't know. But but I just it doesn't 
the effects didn't bother me that much this time. I think because I knew going in the first time, I yeah. think I, I personally feel that the first time I watched this, I, I was ready to, to smack him down. I was yeah. ready to smack down the effects. And I did. And I, I feel like, and by the way, Carpenters wasn't 20 or 30. It was almost 40 years ago. 40 <laughs> years ago. Yeah. yeah. But exactly I, like, yeah. I almost feel like that was a little unfair of me. And that's my own crankiness. That's my own old man waving a cane. Yeah. you know, uh, bitterness about it. And sometimes, and I'm not calling Danny an old man waving a cane, but I'm, sometimes I yeah. feel like maybe I'm doing what he does to the carpenters that we love. Sure. Cause he's not yeah. really looking at the story. He's not, he's just looking at the fact that it's too much blood and guts as opposed to yeah. the black and white one that was like more story driven. And I, I disagree. I think that, I think that's it. The, the source material who goes there is really interesting. It's really yeah. interesting. And it's not that far off in carpenters. And not that far not off. That. It's not. It's, it's not that far off from the 2011 one. They're both very similar yeah. to who goes there. They're almost the same story. And the script, I told you, was a lot like the 2011 one. So these are all very similar stories, and I like it. Yeah. First of all, uh, you can't have a horror movie in a better place. No. Of no. course, Howard Hawks is, was in the North Pole for some reasons at the North Pole, but yeah, but you right. can't have a. It's you just can't. I mean, the the isolation, the snow, the cold. It's like watching Hateful Eight. You can't yeah, have a better. Yeah. You can't have. You can't be more isolated than that, right? I mean, you can't. No. And then you have your, the scene where they try to find out what the thing is or who's the thing. Mm -hmm. Now, in this one, the 2011, I actually liked the way they did that. I did too. I didn't. I didn't like the scene as much as the other one uh -huh. or Carpenters, but I liked the. I guess the premise of oh, this yeah. one. Yeah. I was scared when I watched that the first time. I was uh -huh. like. Holy crap, we're going to look in this guy's mouth and something's going to come flying yeah, out of his yeah, mouth. Right, right. You know, who wants to do that? Who wants to be the one to look? And that, that scene is very edgy and I think um, ranks up there with the carpenter, if not better. You know what I mean? And I think the whole story does. I really do. I, I'm i glad I went back and watched it again. I still, um, the effects still affect me, uh -huh. but I, it's okay. I can get over that now. I mean, the more that I've, you know, now watching the second time, I enjoyed the movie, yeah, because I knew it was a good movie. I knew it was, right. and I and I and for me to tell you the truth, Timo, the fact that they even did that, I think is the greatest thing in the world. I'm proud of people that actually like let's bring this back, and they tried their damnedest, right? And I think they did a great job. I really do. I just you know it was it's a little hard for me. That's okay though. I can get past that, right? I, you know. I like and for me it's it's like seeing Botine's werewolves. I know sometimes you think they look a little I love those are my favorite werewolves. Uh -huh. But then to see a computer version of a werewolf compared to that is how I'm comparing this to the th you know what I mean oh, yeah, two different yeah, yeah. things that can, like, you know so that yeah, yeah. yeah. I like Botine's so, werewolves a lot better than like that cursed movie or something. I mean yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know, here the thing is I like the little nods back to the the original films. Like I always like Carpenter like yeah, oh, when yeah. they're showing the black and white footage of him blowing up the kind of reminded me of the Howard Hawks if it wasn't lifted yeah. from it. You know, I, I, I never yeah. really kind of figured yeah. that out for sure. But then um, what was funny is in this one, the the scientist guy looked a yeah. lot like the evil scientist guy in the Howard Hawks version. I mean, he looked yeah. like a, he's like a dead ringer for him. You know? yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I, I don't know if that was on purpose, but it was hard for me to believe it wasn't because, man, that guy was a dead ringer for him. Um, yeah, I, I like the characters in this, though. I did. I, I do, I too. Really did. I like the Norwegian guys. I like the Norwegian yeah. guys a lot. And I I just really appreciate this film. I really do. And I appreciate what they I appreciate what they did because, yeah. you know, the guys who made this, I'm not talking about the studio that kind of made him go back and do. Th I'm talking about the guys yeah. who made this wanted to make it for us. Sure. And I appreciate yeah. that. And I think they did everything they could to do yeah. that. And I, so honestly, for I, this movie is getting better to me as the years go on. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i appreciating this a lot more yeah. than I ever yeah. did. And, and, and Carpenter is like, I'm going back and watching that again. I had a lot of fun watching that again, too. No, I mean, I it was this, they were both really good. And one didn't cut the other one's throat. I thought one helped the other one. I thought good. the Carpenters yeah. helped. The Norwegians, a different timber. It's a different yeah. timber of film. It's a different pace. It's a different, it, it feels different. It's a different research yeah. station, but it's very, it's the same thing happening. And yep. and even them discovering what the thing is and what's happening, one doesn't really hurt the other one. They're doing it in different ways. And the only, 
<laughs> the only thing is there was a little bit of technology when they were doing <laughs> laboratory stuff that in 82 yeah. looked like Atari and then, you know, some yeah. of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. The other one, you know, and that was with the help from CGI and stuff. But anyway, yeah. oh, um, yeah. look, I think that the 2011 thing, uh, given the year it was made, given what they were trying to do, uh, to me, it's a big grape ape up. It's not to the rafters or anything, but really a big grape ape up from a 2011 film is pretty much skyrocketing to the moon. Right, you know, right. for me, but that is the way I, I I feel about it, and I I do believe it. Is, it was done with all the respect that they could get in 2011, right? You know, for right. for the Carpenter movie. What, what's your final right. thought? What do you think? Um, I'm gonna give it a great bape up, Timo. Um, a solid one. Mm. Um, I'm happy I went back and watched it because then I can kind of watch it some more. You know. Well, that's the thing. This is the so, third third or fourth time for me. If it's the second one yeah. for you, you might have a more thinking of what yeah. I'm thinking as time goes on. If it got yeah, better to yeah. you, it's getting better to me too. Yeah, it, it, it has. And I said, and I remember appreciating it when I first saw it, I just was let down, mm -hmm. you know, this time when I watched it, I didn't feel as let down. I tried to appreciate the film a little bit more. Right. And the character development and stuff like that, you know, which I think it's good. And there's, and there's enough tension in yeah. this film too. Yeah. And with them being Norwegian and stuff, it, it's, there's even more tension because there's a little language barrier too and stuff, you know? So right. I liked that a and, little bit too. And we got a cast that looks a little bit more like real people. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, I sure. mean that Mary yeah. Elizabeth Winstead is very pretty, you know, yeah. Joel Egerton's a handsome fella. I bet they're, uh, yeah, you're going to have a pretty, they're hand, normal I mean, looking, yeah, I yeah. mean, they're in a group of people you're going to have, that's what the group of people look like. I mean, you know, right. so I, yeah. I mean, the, everything to me was absolutely was fine, you know, for it. So, all right. So you're, you're basically great baping it up, but, but it's, yeah. it's on an upward trajectory for you. Yes. Yeah. Right, we'll yes. come back to it again sometime and see if it even helps you, even if it does even <laughs> more someday. So <laughs> that's right. All right. So we got, let's see, I got a big great ape up. And of course we love Carpenter's a thing. I wouldn't disagree wow. with you. That's it's at least in my top 10, if not five as well. Yeah. You know, not I like yourself. Yeah. I think it's one of the first things that we became friends talking about this yeah. and American werewolf and stuff like that. So, so two uh Friends I, ever since us, absolutely <laughs> so we got a big great ape up for me for um the 2011 the thing the thing prequel uh the, 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 oh one quick well real quick yeah. I, I gotta shoot this in real quick there, i sure. do have an issue with hollywood and titles stop it <laughs> okay yeah stop it and people said that they tried to change like the well none of the title call it the thing before yeah there you go Joel Egerton was just in a movie that was stupid called It Comes at Night. So yeah. call it The Thing Before. There I think that's go. a cool title. I mean, it yeah. works. Don't just call it The Thing. Don't just call things Halloween. Don't just call yeah. things Jumanji. Just, just <laughs> call them a different, please. It helps when I'm that's, alphabetizing. Yeah. It's making it, helps it hard. When I'm alphabetizing <laughs> Ben Harley. For yeah. the love of all the holy, stop it, Hollywood. So yeah. anyway, but yeah, I have so. a hard time talking to people about these movies anymore because then I got to like, first off, it takes yeah. me a couple minutes to tell them which one I'm talking about. Yeah, jeez, quit, <laughs> quit like overtly <laughs> trying to make a buck for the love of all it's holy. So anyway, <laughs> so we got a big great paper for me, 2011 thing. We got a solid or just a regular great paper yeah. for you, but on the upward tra trajectory. Uh, yeah. And we got, yeah, we'll see, what'd you get on the tow bar? We both got a great paper yeah. for fun. Or you got a little more uh, mild. mild. A little more mild. mild. All right. Yeah, a little more mild. You might be just a touch more mild because I I really was laughing. You know, yeah. It might have been the yeah. wine talking and various <laughs> yeah. other things I inhaled. But uh, yeah, uh, I just, yeah, I was having a good time with it. So, all right, Ben Harley, let's get the hell out of here. Okay. And uh, next week, I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be from Dermal Ridge. It's going to be fantastic. And the audio That's is going right. to keep getting better on this show. You watch. You, you, or, watch. you listen. Don't watch. You listen. listen. Yeah. <laughs> and you find out about this stuff. Let me tell you. So we will report yeah. back next week. Ben Harley, until then, stay spooky. And we'll talk to you then. Keep it creepy, people. You've been listening to the Tim Owen Harley Show, brought to you by ScreenPrintingFactory.com, your affordable one-stop solution to all your screen printing needs.